Today we are continuing, in fact we are finishing after several months a long series of lessons regarding the power of God's Word. The greatest power on earth in spite of all the power that we see exercised by governments, especially leaders in some cases that don't care anything about God or those who worship God. But in spite of all of that, we realize that the greatest power on earth is the Word of God. It still is today. In spite of the trials that we are faced face during this virus so-called situation, and yet the Word of God is powerful. And it is powerful enough to raise us to eternal life. Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension to heaven, in spite of all that man tried to do to stop the plan of God, Jesus died for the sins of humanity, was raised from the dead, and ascended to heaven where he has been ruling ever since over 2,000 years ago or of thereabouts at the right hand of God where he is ruling now. We looked at the day of Jesus' coming, the resurrection, judgment, and eternal destiny of all. It is inevitable that these things are going to come to pass and no amount of opposition from the devil and those who follow him will prevent these things from taking place. Jesus' resurrection confirms that all will be raised and judged the Holy Spirit revealed and confirmed Jesus is now reigning from heaven. Jesus' reign will end at his final coming, not begin, but will end at his final coming when he raises all from the dead. Jesus foretells the day of judgment and eternal destiny of all. And then we looked at that day of judgment where all of us will give an account for how we have lived before God. Even those that reject God now and are disobedient to Him now, all of us will be at that appointed day of judgment after the resurrection. Our eternal destiny is either hell or heaven, hell prepared for the devil and his angels, for those who do not obey the gospel in heaven for those who obey the gospel by his grace and are cleansed from their sins and seek to become like Jesus abide in the apostles teaching and live abiding in his truth it is easy to become discouraged and become distracted, especially at these trying times where our faith is being severely tested, especially in the state of New York and the city of New York. But in spite of that, we remember that today could be the day of Jesus coming again. It could be that day. And if it is that day, then nobody will stop Jesus from coming again. And we just have one point as we come to the conclusion of our lesson regarding the power to raise us to eternal life in this series regarding the power of God's Word. In light of Jesus coming again and the resurrection and the day of judgment and our eternal destiny in hell or heaven, in light of all of that coming about, and it could come about even today, with what attitude should we live as his children? We must live an eager, watchful, holy, faithful, and hopeful life. That is, we look forward to what comes ahead in spite of the trials that we face here. We look forward and we long for the coming of Jesus and all the glory that is to be unfolded, ending in eternal life. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 1. Now as to the times of the epics, 
Brethren, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know full well that the day of the Lord will come just like a thief in the night. That is, it will be unexpected. While they are saying peace and safety, then destruction will come upon them suddenly like labor pains upon a woman with child, and they will not, will not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, that the day would overtake you like a thief. For you are all sons of light and sons of day, We are not of the night, nor of the darkness, that is, nor of sin or unrighteousness. So then let us not sleep, that is, spiritually sleep, as others do. But let us be alert, that is, watchful for Jesus' coming, even today, and sober, that is, with self-control, not giving ourselves over to the lust of the flesh, For those who sleep do their sleeping at night, and those who get drunk get drunk at night. And one thing we have noticed, that the churches have been closed, but the liquor stores have never closed in the city of New York. They have never closed in the state of New York and various parts of this country, even though the churches have closed for months at a time. It just shows that we cater to those who are sinning and who are intent on sinning and living in darkness. And that is ongoing. But let us not give in to those things and follow those things. But since we are of the day, since we are of the truth, let us be sober, under self-control, the control of God, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation, that is, completely brought about in a glorious resurrection, judgment and eternal life. Verse 9, 1 Thessalonians 5, For God has not destined us for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we will live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up one another, just as you also are doing, because our hope in Christ cannot be taken away in spite of the evil that men are doing to God's people today. Our hope must never be taken away because Jesus is still coming. There will be a resurrection judgment and our eternal destiny, hopefully to eternal life if we remain faithful. With that in mind, instead of continuing in sin, we turn from our sins because God is patiently waiting in spite of the coming judgment, waiting that we might turn and repent and turn to what is right, turn to his righteousness by his grace. Romans 2 and verse 1. Therefore you have no excuse, every one of you who passes judgment, for in that which you, for in that which you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. And even Christians have been lulled into thinking that I I don't have to be opposed to homosexuality and other things that are ungodly and I can still please God and not be openly opposed to these things. That is a condemnation in Romans chapter 2. Even if you give silent consent to these things, you become guilty with those who do them unless we oppose them openly. And we know that the judgment of God rightly falls upon those who practice such things, that is, even those who consent to these things, even though they may not do them. But do you suppose this, O man, when you pass judgment on those who practice such things and do the same yourself, that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you think lightly of the riches 
of his kindness and tolerance and patience, not knowing that the kindness of God leads you to repentance. That is, even in these trying times, God is patient. We have the opportunity to, to repent of our sins and to turn to God, and we ought to be doing that knowing that Jesus' coming is inevitable, the judgment, the resurrection, the judgment, and eternal destiny, hell or heaven. Paul said in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 21, For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. We're living in a society where to live on the earth is everything, and to be in Christ is nothing. But Paul said, For me to live is Christ, and even to die is gain. That is, to be with Christ is much better than to be here upon the earth. But if I am to live on in the flesh, this will mean fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which to choose. But I am hard-pressed from both directions, having the desire to depart, that is, to die and be with Christ, for that is very much better, better than anything on the face of the earth. Yet to remain on in the flesh is more necessary for your sake. That is, Paul said, I don't know which to choose. But at that time, God would allow him to continue that he might serve the Philippians and others, building them up in the faith of the Lord Jesus and teaching the gospel to the lost. But to be with Christ, make no mistake, in eternity is far better than being in this life. But if we are going to be in this life, let us give ourselves over to serving Christ, not serving self or sin. Philippians 3 and verse 20, For our citizenship is in heaven, that is, our behavior, and why we, we behave in any way in this life is not rooted in, in the laws of humanity, but is rooted in the word of God, from which also we eagerly wait, that is, from heaven, for a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform the body of our humble state into conformity with the body of his glory by the exertion of the power that he has even to subject all things to himself. That is, when Jesus comes, he will have no problem transforming our fleshly, decayed body into a glorious, incorruptible body suited for our eternal spirit to habitate. And so, even in spite of all the trials that we face and the church faces, we have a hope that cannot be extinguished because it rests upon the resurrection and rule and coming again of the Lord Jesus. And we ought to be ready to share that hope with any poor soul that is despondent, disturbed, and that sees that the world as people portray it to be is not what it is. It is corrupting. It is... Uh, sin-filled, it has no hope in it. It has death as the end result, physical and spiritual. And so the human soul cries out, is there anything better? And we need to be ready with the answer, hope in Christ. Hope in Christ is better. 1 Peter 3 and verse 14. But even if you should suffer for the sake of righteousness, you are blessed. And do not fear their intimidation. And do not be troubled. But sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts, always being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is in you. Yet with gentleness and reverence and keep a good conscience 
so that in the thing in which you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ will be put to shame. For it is better if God should will it so that you suffer for doing what is right than for doing what is wrong. For Christ also died for sins once for all, the just for the unjust, so that he might bring us to God, having been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit. That is, we need to be ready to give an answer for the hope that is in us, because nothing is going to stop the purpose of God. Even now in these trials of restricting the churches, God's purpose will not ever be defeated. Not in the long term, not even in the short term, even though we may suffer. But God's purpose will not be defeated. Jesus is coming again, and it may be today. And in light of that, we are hopeful of the resurrection and the hope of eternal life. 2 Peter 3 and verse 3. Know this first of all that in the last days mockers will come with their mocking following after their own lusts and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all continues just as it was from the beginning of creation. That is, everything is going along just the same. God is not coming. Jesus is not coming. There is nothing to what God has promised. Verse 5, For when they maintain this, it escapes their notice, that by the word of God the heavens existed long ago, and the earth was formed out of water and by water, through which the world at that time was destroyed, being flooded with water, that is, in the days of Noah and his family. God destroyed all humanity except eight souls through which the world was repopulated again that his purpose to bring Jesus into the world might continue. Don't think that everything has always gone along and there cannot be a wide-scale destruction and yet so many, they fear this virus more than they fear the coming of the Lord Jesus. They have no concern about the coming of the Lord Jesus and the resurrection and judgment. They only hang on to their corruptible earthly lives, which will all end in death. Whether we die of this virus or not, this earthly life always ends in physical death. And if we do not turn to the Lord Jesus in submission to his gospel, by the power of his grace through the cleansing of his blood, it will end in our spiritual death, eternal torment. Verse 7 of Second Peter 3. But by his word the present heavens and earth are being reserved for fire, kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. That is, God is next going to destroy the world by fire instead of water. But do not let this one fact escape your notice, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years like one day. That is, God's timetable does not run by human time. God is not uh, impatient in his dealings, but will bring it about at the proper time. But he does not go on a 24-hour clock. His, his view is much grander and greater than ours since he is an eternal being. Second Peter 3 and verse 9, The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, slowness but is patient toward you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief in which the heavens will pass away with a roar and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat and the earth and its works will be burned up. 
you know, that will be the time when there will not only be a global warming, and I'm not talking about a false global warming, that hysterical, unscientific, pseudo-scientists tell us that is here, which is not true, but I'm talking about a true global warming that will heat the earth until all elements of the earth are destroyed completely. And that will be brought about by the fire of God, the creator of the heavens of the earth in his time. Since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, what sort of people ought you to be in holy conduct that is separated for God's service and godliness looking to God to please Him above all, looking for, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God because of, because of which the heavens will be destroyed by burning and the elements will melt with intense heat. But according to His promise, we are looking for a new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. That is an eternal dwelling place that Jesus is preparing for us now. How should we live? We should live holy and godly lives, not following the world which is bent on destroying itself spiritually. That is the greatest threat to the world. Not a false global warming that is a concocted by people who are violating every law of scientific knowledge and principle. But I'm talking about a spiritual devastation that will not only end in our physical death, but our spiritual de death if we follow those who are in darkness, who don't believe and don't obey God. Instead of that, Romans 12 and verse 1, Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to, God, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed, made different by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. And with that in mind, we seek the will of God, not the temporary and destructive lusts and works of the flesh, that part of the human spirit that opposes itself unsuccessfully against God. But letting the Word of God make us different to become conformed to the image of Christ, ready, eagerly waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus and our ultimate salvation in eternity. 1 John 3 and verse 1. See how great a love the Father has bestowed on us that we would be called children of God, and such we are. For this reason the world does not know us, because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not appeared as yet what we will be. We know that when he appears we will be like him, because we will see him just as he is. And then he says, and everyone who has this hope, that is of seeing Jesus and becoming just like he is, with a spiritual body, eternal, glorious spiritual body provided. Everyone who has this hope fixed on him purifies himself, just as he is pure. That is, we abstain from sin and seek to follow after God and seek to be changed and made different from within by the word of God. And thankfully, by the grace of God, as we seek to do so as his beloved children, as Christians, when we fall short and go back into sin, we turn back, 
repent of our sins and confess them to God and the blood of Jesus is ready to cleanse us by the grace of God and by his power from all sin. Without the grace of God and the cleansing of our souls from sin, we can have no hope of growing in his grace and knowledge. 1 John 1 and verse 7, But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so we are able to continue by the grace of God as fallen Christians as we confess and turn from our sins and go back to meditating and applying the word of God to our lives, being changed and made into that living sacrifice as he would have us be, like the, becoming like Jesus. In 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 22, as we begin to close our lesson and the series on the power of God's word, 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 22, If anyone does not love the Lord, he is to be accursed. Maranatha. Maranatha, the NASB says, the New American Standard says. But what does that mean? Well, in the New King James Version, the verse reads like this. 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 22. If anyone does not love the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be accursed. O Lord, come. That is, we are eager for the Lord to come. Maranatha, O Lord, come. And we ought to be eager for the Lord Jesus to come, even today, and watchful and hopeful and ready, seeking to be obedient to his will and rejoicing in his word. And with that in mind, we close with a verse, a passage that we often have mentioned in this lesson, this series on the power of God's Word. 2 Timothy 4 and verse 1. In 2 Timothy 4 and verse 1, I solemnly charge you, Paul says, in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingdom, that is, by his rule and his coming again, his final coming, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with great patience and instruction. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires. That is, whatever sins they want to follow, they will find those teachers who will endorse those sins and say that they will not be punished for the sins that they are continuing in and will turn, turn away their ears from the truth and will turn aside to myths. But you be sober in all things, Endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. For I am already re ready being, being poured out as a drink offering. And the time of my departure, that is Paul's death, has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. In the future there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord the righteous judge will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. That is, who love him as Savior and Lord, and who love him as the judge to come. 
then he will, will, will award to us that righteous eternal crown that we may ever be with him in the glorious incorruptible place and with the glorious incorruptible body that we will be given at the resurrection. This is why we preach the word without hesitation, hopefully without fear of man, that we may be well equipped if even today it might be the Lord's coming may be at that time, may be even this day. We must live an eager, eager, watchful, holy, faithful, and hopeful life. That is, that is why we are to live before God. So what have we learned in these lessons as we begin to close? We have seen Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension to heaven. We have seen that the day of Jesus' coming is could be any day. The resurrection of the dead, all unrighteous and righteous, at the same time, not a thousand year span in between. The day of judgment where all will be judged and our eternal destiny, hell or heaven. We must live an eager, watchful, holy, faithful, and hopeful life before God turning into that living sacrifice, becoming more like the Lord Jesus. But we cannot do that unless we have become a Christian. And we have not become a Christian unless we obey the gospel in the way that is revealed in the New Testament. And sadly, that gospel is not taught in so many places in this country and in the world. When they cried out, what must we do to be saved? Peter said, repent in Acts 2.38. Repent and be baptized, each one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That is, upon your faith in Jesus and your trust in him as the Son of God, repent of your sins. Change your mind about your sins and turn to God and as the eunuch did in Acts chapter 8, confess him as the Son of God and then be baptized, immersed in water for the forgiveness of your sins. That is how we become a Christian, being baptized into Christ, into his death, so that we may be raised up by faith in the power of God through the blood of Jesus, cleansed of our sins, to begin a new life as a forgiven child of God born again by the power of the gospel to save we do not become a Christian by the sinner's prayer there's no power in the sinner's prayer to make anybody become a Christian but only in repentance and confession of Jesus as the son of God and baptism for the forgiveness of our sins would you do that today would you turn and obey the gospel wherever you may be? And if we can be contacted by phone or email or by YouTube comment on the YouTube Bible Search channel, then we'll do our best either to aid you ourselves here in New York City or if it's beyond to find someone that will aid you at the earliest to obey the gospel before it is ever too late. And those who are already Christians have been baptized into Christ, let us repent and pray that we may be forgiven of our sins by a gracious God and that we may go forward and grow in his grace and knowledge and become more of that living and holy sacrifice conforming to the image of his Son. If anyone is here and may listen to this lesson at any time and is subject to the gospel in any way, we hope and we desire that you might respond at your earliest time as we bring our lesson 
to an application to ourselves and to all as we bring it to a close now we encourage all to respond to the gospel